consider open last canopy. Because I asked you not to close it so we don't lose our metric. So I usually now use all these tiles here to compute my metric. Maybe let's do both. Then I show you now what I would usually do. That doesn't require making the clipping again stand. So I would now usually do. I uncheck this button. And I don't merge anymore. And now I pick a, a, a pixel size for my rasters. Which pixel size do you pick for your rasters? Usually, usually set it to the same size as the sample books, which were 400 and it's very old. So 20 meters. Yeah. It's very no, we are in last canopy. I closed last clip. And these polygons that you see here, I'm not using them because I unchecked this button. They're just here, they are because the visualization doesn't go away. What now happens, and we need to create, no, we need to select a different output directory. For each of these rasters you see here, we can now create tiles metrics, for each of these tiles you see here, we now create the exact same metrics we created in all the blocks. That of course includes the areas outside the stands, which is a bit of a waste of computation. Um, but assuming you have a very large area, in most of the area stand, the amount of basic computation is rather small. And the nice thing is now I can run on multiple cores again. And now my output format, I don't use CSV files, I produce rasters. My favorite raster is at the build moment. It's a binary format that is more efficient than the ASP format. But if you want to look at it in a text editor, and these rasters are fairly small, the ASP format is actually also okay. Because we have 20 by 20 meter plots, and our uh, tiles are 500 by 500 meters. That means 500 divided by 20 is. So we get rasters that are 25 by 25 pixels. That's really minuscule. So we can use the ASP format here. I need to close something up here. And I'm not sure I did everything correct. Oh, now I don't want to forget it. This time I want to drop the noise point. So I go to filter. By classification, drop classification. I was lucky that no noise points fell into any of the plots, but some noise points will fall somewhere into these cells. So I'm dropping the classification 7. So whenever the file is read and it comes across a point that has the code 7, it just I'm not going to read it. Let's review the command line before we start it. Okay, so last canopy. The list of files is all these tiles. They are not buffered. I'm running in parallel and I'm always dropping the noise points. And then I compute exactly the same metrics as before. And remember, we change this to 30. So I should also do it now. And then we output the result, this time as rasters. 
this will be a lot of rasters because for every tile as input, we generate one raster tile as output per metric. So one tile input for every little thing you list here, minus all, minus min, minus max, it'll generate one raster output. Martin, shouldn't it be all bill there? Well, I, I went to ask. Oh, sorry. Because it's such small rasters, only 25 by 25. They're easier to look at in a. Yeah, for this size, it hardly matters. Yeah. It would be nice also to see on, a, on the last view, but it's okay. Yeah, ask. Can yeah. Oh, you can do that. Yeah. I thought That's why I choose it. I can do both. I can look at it. Bill and, and ask here. Bill and ask. Okay. And DTM mm. from Fusion. And that's why I like Bill, because if you have a big raster, Bill reads really fast. fast yeah. But for a 25 by 25 pixel raster, it, yeah. So what happens now? For every all these tiles, we're computing the same exact metrics for every 20 by 20 meter area. So now instead of computing it for the plots, we use 20 by 20 meter area. All points falling into every 20 by 20 meter area get all the metrics computed. <laughs> And those are in areas we have no idea about what's there. And because we do it everywhere, this includes the road. It includes somebody driving on their motorbike, you know. And we compute the same metrics for that person. He'd probably be under the cutoff, unfortunately. And uh, now that's what happens sometimes when you work with cutting edge software. <laughs> All right, since I will be able to copy that data and recreate the error, I'll, uh, I'll fix that in the next release. But let's see what we did get. So, because some of the files are now zero in size still, and that seems to tell me it failed at the beginning and not at the end. So these zero files are where we didn't get any metrics, unfortunately. Let's look at the ones where it did work. Um, and you can open .asc files also with last view. Uh, Maybe I'll just double click and do the same thing again. This seems to be a corner file. So here's, you can open these rasters with last view. And you need to press plus, plus, plus a few times. Now, of course, these are just, and you can triangulate them. So this is the max file of this particular of this particular um, tile. Here's a P90. I press T to triangulate, and then you can also go to the visualizations with H. You know, you look at looks like a fairly uh, flat. Um, I don't know where we are here exactly. Um, let's look at some other files. A bit more interesting looking here. Uh, that is a P90 of a more interesting area. I guess we could look. Uh, we, we could look for the file names here. So we want to go somewhere where we have plots. So 7500. I'm looking here for a file where I have plots. 7500 and 9000. So hopefully this is one of the ones that work. 7500 and 9000. Can it be covered? 
Fire, for example. I don't know how to do because I don't have 